That's crazy. I really thought I was going to be editing. Y'all have no idea how ghetto it is. Like, the equipment I used to edit is sad. Like, I need a hug. <laughs> we move. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Akram. I post Islamic reminders, girl chats, and the occasional vlog. If those are things that interest you, please click subscribe, and let's jump into this video. I was editing. I made a 26-minute video on this topic right now, and when I went to listen to it after uploading it to edit, I heard that the microphone tapped out in the first five seconds. All I hear is the whole 26 minutes. It's like, I don't know what to do with my life. Anywho, you plan it. Allah plans and Allah's plan is the best. Alhamdulillah, maybe there's a reason why I can't upload this video. But I'm real hurt. I'm sitting in front of my laptop. It's right here. I'm trying to edit. And it's not happening. <laughs> I don't have time to cry. I don't have energy to cry. We're not going to do it. Okay, bismillah. You guys can see from the title, it is four things we can do to benefit from the last few days of Ramadan, inshallah. Right now, I think it's the 18th day of Ramadan. We don't have time now. So, so boom, number one. What's the first thing we can do to improve our Ramadan? And take advantage of the last few days, inshallah, is start reading Quran. Remember, this month is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran. It came down from the Samawat for us. It's a guidance for us. And the Quran is kalamullah. It's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I feel like for us to better connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love him more, we need to read the Quran. We need that connection. Reading the Quran will build your tawheed and strengthen your iman beyond anything beyond any heart softening lectures beyond any reminders beyond anything honestly just go to the quran and read it this is the only way i feel like we can take that step forward into strengthening our tawheed if you want to know why maybe you're feeling weak in ramadan or why you're not like feeling that buzz i think it's because of you're not connecting with the quran and that this is the month we should be doing that inshallah Hey guys, so real quick, I just wanted to share with you the app that I use. This is the Yadan app. This is what I use to read my Quran. And it's absolutely amazing. Let me show you here. It organizes it for me and everything. But the number one thing I love about this app is that it gives me the English translation for each ayah. This helps me better connect with the Quran because I understand what I'm reading. And I'm not just reading mindlessly. It also gives me an option to listen to a reciter when I'm reading. You guys can see each ayah has a play button. That way you prevent yourself from making mistakes when you're reading the Qur'an the way it's supposed to be read. The very useful part of that app. There also has a dua option. Let me just show you guys real quick. It's going to come up. The dua options in this app help with every occasion. It's organized into three categories and each category has a lot of duas. So if you haven't heard of this, please download it today. This is not an ad. Please, like, I'm wholeheartedly suggesting this app because it's useful for me. And I want like everyone to benefit the way I'm benefiting, inshallah. And just an incentive, if you do struggle with reading Arabic, you get more reward, subhanAllah. Allah is so merciful where if I'm struggling reading the Qur'an, I get more reward than the person who's just reading it. So if that's you, inshallah, push yourself and download the app. This is an Android app. I don't know about iOS. I can't speak for you. I think there are Qur'an apps out there. But this one is the one that I use, and it's absolutely amazing. The second thing we can do, inshallah, to benefit this Ramadan, and I pray that this microphone is working. Lord, please, I can't. So the second thing we can do is feed the fasting person. Get into the habit of either making food for the people who are breaking their fast, or if you're already doing that, alhamdulillah, do it with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting your reward. What is the reward of feeding a fasting person? You get the reward equivalent to the person fasting. So let's say you're not fasting that day. If you make a food for people, you get the same reward as the person who's breaking their fast. So, alhamdulillah, like without the person reducing their ajr, like that person will get their full reward and you get the reward. And just to remind us, what is the reward for the past fasting person? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every um, reward of bin Adhan is like multiplied by 10 to 700. Like reading one haraf in the Quran, it's like alif lam mim is like 30 hasanat. Each letter is 10. And then it goes up to like 700. But the reward for fasting is with me, which implies it exceeds 700. Allah will what it is, but it's an amazing reward. So if you're able to get your own fasting reward, and then because you made somebody else's afur, you made somebody else's food to break their fast, you get their reward, you're doubling automatically just for one person. And let's say 
five people are the people you're making the fast for. That's six fasts you've accumulated for making the food for one day. So I'm not good at math, so let's, let's, let's just do this slowly. Let's say Ramadan has like 30 days, okay? For 30 days, you're making that food for those 30 days. That's six times 30. Let's take like zero. Three, six times three. 180. You get 180 days of fasting reward for the fasting for 30 days. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like that's an amazing deal. So feeding the fasting person is not really a punishment, and I know it feels like it because you have no energy, you're in the kitchen, you're around the food, but if you think about it in a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me this chance to better my chances to get the Jannah, this is a blessing instead of some kind of like curse or test or struggle. If you think positive about it, it makes it easier. So alhamdulillah for that opportunity. Who knows if next year you're going to be able to get the same reward, right? Allah alam. So take it in stride and inshallah khair. So that's the second thing we can do is feeding the fasting person. The third thing we can do before Ramadan ends is attend taraweeh and tahajjud. If you have not yet done so, come to the masjid and pray with your brothers and sisters in Islam. Like the sisters, it's an amazing opportunity because we find it very difficult to do this kind of stuff on our own. But when you're with your sisters, it's like you don't feel tired because you're with company and you get this energy and this like this iman boost. And that's like the blessing of Ramadan, especially night prayers. Like you feel it, that sense of community. You're doing group worship kind of. Sounds kind of heathen. I don't know. Does it sound weird? I don't know. I don't mean like group, like humming and stuff. Like you mean like we're praying in Jama'ah. We're with each other. We're supporting each other. You're leaning on each other, reading Quran with each other. When you see your sister doing something, you want to do it too. So it's like I'm feeding off your energy, right? Group group worship. We gonna say that. That's something I really miss. Like I, Alhamdulillah, I've been going to my local masjid here in Kuwait, but that's something I miss in Toronto, where I'm from. Here, Alhamdulillah, I, the reason I come to the masjid is because. Again, I get that sense of community. I might not understand what the sheikh is saying like 99% of the time. And I might not understand what the sisters are talking about 100% of the time. But these are all Muslim people doing the same thing I'm doing, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I get that sisterhood from that, that energy, that vibe that I'm looking for from that. This is just a side note to the sisters who are not at home right now and they're living abroad like me. Go to your local masjids. You need that sense of community. Don't keep yourself in your house because it will not do anything for your mental health or your spiritual health, inshallah. So attend the masjid and pray. If you haven't attended yet, go. There's no shame in coming to the masjid and praying. The masjid isn't anybody's. It's Allah's house. So you should make it somewhere you're comfortable. Be familiar with it. And the people, those of you who are already in the masjid, welcome those sisters when you see people who are new in the masjid. Because... It's easier for the jama'ah to welcome one person than one person try to get into the jama'ah, into the group. It's more uncomfortable for that person. Okay, the last thing we want to do is istighfar. You guys, istighfar is so vital for you in this month. Okay guys, so here's the hadith. I think many of you have seen this where the Prophet Sallallahu said Amin three times. And then the Sahaba asked him later why he did that. And he said that Jibreel came to him and said, whoever reaches the month of Ramadan and is not forgiven, he'll enter hellfire and Allah will cast him away. So say Ameen. And he, the Prophet said Ameen. I just wanted to put it here because I was paraphrasing and I didn't want to. Why are we being cursed? Why? Astaghfirullah, not us. It's not a group thing. Why is the person being cursed and sent to hellfire for not getting forgiven in Ramadan? It's because they didn't seek it. They didn't ask for it. And this is a month of mercy. So if you didn't seek it, it's intentional. Like you went out of your way to say, I'm not doing nothing this month. So of course, that kind of person deserves no mercy and is going to be given hell. We have to remember in Ramadan, the gates of Jannah are open and the gates of hell are closed. The shaydans are chained. The big shaydans are chained. So everything is in your favor. I That's my biggest fear. It's like, what if I'm leaving Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't forgiven me? That's a back thought. Because that's what the sahabas were thinking. They're always afraid of committing a sin, of being hypocrites, of doing something that's going to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though they were the best of this ummah. Right, right after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's the sahaba and the tabi'in and tabi tabi'in. These are people who are terrified of not doing well. These are people who have promised Jannah and still terrified of their deeds. What about us, Muskeen people in the 21st century? Now there's a certain dua we can say for Laylatul Qadr. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to say this only on Laylatul Qadr, but we don't know when it is. So I would suggest we say this dua that I'm about to tell you 
every single night, inshallah. Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu if I do catch Laylatul Qadr, what should I say? And the Prophet sallallahu gave her a dua to say, and it's, Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. I'm going to put it in the video here on the bottom. You guys can see. Read that. I want you guys to read that every single day, minimum 10 times, like right after you break your fast. Because what if you don't catch Laylatul Qadr, but it's on that day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua from you, your dua from you, right? And that's one of the times when your dua is accepted is when you break your fast. So you're hitting two birds with one stone. Number one, you could be doing it on the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually forgives you because he's accepting your dua. And you could be doing it on the day of Laylatul Qadr where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept it. And that's equivalent to you reading that dua for a thousand months. So in all those situations, you're winning. Don't limit it to one day because I know a lot of people believe it's on the 27th. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it because no one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never disclosed it. The Prophet sallallahu never confirmed it. Nobody knows what day it is. You have 10 days to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of mercy. Don't limit it to just one day. Don't play yourself like that. Do a lot more istighfar. Astaghfirullah tubi ilayk layla illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum min al Like, make yourself busy with dhikr these last few days. You want to be forgiven. You don't want to be the person going to hell because you weren't forgiven, because you never made effort. That's on your part. Right? Allah is ghafoor rahim at the end of the day, but he's also shadid on iqab. He is like severe in his punishment. We don't want to see that. We want his mercy and want his rahim. He is ghafoor rahim. His mercy outweighs his punishment. But don't play yourself. Don't risk it. Honestly, I don't know when I'm going to upload this video. So inshallah, when you guys do get to see this video, I hope you benefit from it. You guys watch it. If you want, share it, please. There's more barakah when we're sharing things. And that's the end of this video, inshallah. Thank you so much for watching till the end. And I will catch you in my next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.